My dear sisters and brothers, at the heart of the Christian faith is the conviction that God brings surprising good out of the most challenging circumstances. We see that as the difficulty and distress of Good Friday gives way to the triumph and victory of Easter Sunday. At Synod last year, I encouraged us to engage a world of difference with the love and truth of Jesus. Now at the time, none of us had any idea just how different our world was about to become. And one side of that difference is, of course, that we're unable to gather for Synod as usual this year. But in the midst of COVID, bushfires, floods and hailstorms, God has been faithful. I just want to share with you some examples of God's grace at work, drawing on the six key priority areas I talked about 12 months ago. The first of those was gracious and patient witness. Now, while COVID has challenged some opportunities for witness, such as our in-person church services, it's opened up other opportunities as well. St. James Holt is one of many parishes in our diocese that took the opportunity to offer online alpha, reaching out to people in their own lounge rooms with the good news of Jesus, offering an opportunity to build community and explore spiritual questions across the bounds of different distance. The second key priority area, safe and sustainable ministry. It's been in our custom in our diocese to support a clergy in ministry each year by holding a clergy conference at Naruma in May. Obviously, that wasn't possible this year. So under the leadership of Bishop Carroll, we decided to host our first ever virtual clergy conference using Zoom. Over 100 participants joined together for a time of learning from each other and from a variety of interstate and overseas guests. And no doubt, as a diocese and as individual ministry units and agencies in the days ahead, we'll learn more about how we can use similar technology to keep connected with each other without necessarily having to travel. The third key priority area, compassionate and skilled service. I'm filming this update in the grounds of St John's Care here in Canberra. During the COVID crisis, St John's Care has been part of the Canberra Relief Network, distributing vitally needed assistance uh, to people, many of whom had no contact with this service before. People like overseas students, people in casual and temporary employment, people whose work was unable to continue during times of physical restrictions. Another example of compassionate and skilled care is the generosity shown by staff and students at Canberra Girls Grammar School who responded to the bushfire crisis by giving generously to our Ang Anglicare bushfire relief appeal and by initiating their own relief projects. The fourth key priority area is creative and informed advocacy. Parishes and ministry units in bushfire affected areas have been passionate advocates for the well-being of their neighbours. Here are just a few ways in which parishes have responded to the needs around them. Parishes have funded emergency rental assistance. Parishes have supported people accessing trauma counselling. Parishes have assisted with the purchase of generators and vital household goods and parishes have hosted courses on loss and grief in these and many other ways. Parishes have stood with those who are hurting and in so doing modelled something of the love of God who stands with us in Jesus. The next key priority area is just and generous stewardship. Here I want to pay particular tribute to the work of many staff at diocesan headquarters who've enabled us to access support through various government schemes, who've ensured that we keep complying with the ever-changing public health requirements, 
I also want to say a big thank you for those at parish and agency level who've supplied us with regular updates on their financial situation, who've implemented their own plans to make sure that when people gather together, they can do so safely. It's been a great team effort. The final key priority area, inspiring and empowered worship. Even as COVID uh, restricted some opportunities for worship as normal, it opened up new possibilities. Let me give you just one example. In the parish of Binder, one of our smaller rural parishes with seven different centres, they took the opportunity to develop what they call Binder Zoom Church. Each Sunday, people from across that whole parish would gather together online for a time of interactive worship learning and fellowship but it wasn't only them god drew new people into their midst and out of that shared experience developed a greater sense of participation in god's mission and connection with each other now we still face challenges and i have no doubt that in the days weeks and months ahead we'll have new opportunities to experience and reflect on God's faithfulness. But I hope at this time you'll be able to pause and give thanks and recognize what God has done in our midst. We have much to celebrate. And as we gather together in a little while for our Zoom Synod updates, there'll be further opportunities to look forward together and ask and answer questions about how together we might continue to engage our very different world with the love and truth of Jesus. Thank you, and may God bless you all richly in Christ Jesus. Amen.